Now, thinking on along those lines, so going back to your college career, and then now you're getting your opportunity slowly in the you know, world scene, the Olympic team, and explain how that kind of evolved and led into the, I want to say 2016 Olympics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So yeah, yeah that's my bad. I forgot to answer your question. No, 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 I no worries. This is all great information. Okay. So I end up after that opportunity, I end up kind of being maybe not a, the starter, but one of the two. It, it looks like I'm possibly on a travel team. And so we continue, we continue, we continue. I end up practicing a lot more with the first team or what seems to be the first team guys. And okay, I make a trip to the Norseka tournament, which qualifies for Grand Champions Cup. And we're going into that tournament, understanding Canada is very good. And we're probably not, you know, probably not going to win. We're in a rebuilding year. We didn't have a great world league. Um, let's temper expectations. We're going to try to you know, get better, understand where we're at as a young team. I forgot a name. Um, Sean Rooney was all in this as well. Sorry, Sean. Definitely was one of the guys I was looking up to in that gym as well. And so Sean Rooney's on that team as well. It was him and Reed Pretty starting it outside. And Matt Anderson was first year um, as, as an opposite. And so we go to Canada and we play this North Sake. I end up starting the whole tournament. I don't think we lost a set and we end up winning the championship and I get best setter and best server. Like this little 19 year old kid <laughs> get, you know, um, alongside some of the best servers in the world, in my opinion. And I end up, you know, outscoring them in aces and whatever. And so I'm fired up <laughs> and that, that boosted my confidence quite a bit because a lot of veterans, David Lee was like, dude, you're a setter. You are a setter now. Like you just earned it and showed what you can do. And so that was a big confidence booster. And so that qualified us for grand champions cup, which about a month later. So at this time I am now emailing my professors or my, um, gosh, what do you call it? The person that helps you like counselors or set classes up. Oh, yeah. advisor or someone. Advisor, exactly. Uh-huh. My academic advisor. There it is. Got it. Um, hey, it looks like I'm going to be gone for <laughs> the month of October. Can we, you know, what professors will be cool with that? What professors will not be cool with that? So we'll make me drop to class. Um, how many, uh, you know, classes can I do online or lectures can I watch online and submit different assignments, this and that. And so that was my first taste of college and national team stuff. And so we go to Japan, which is where world cup, uh, grand champions cup was. And this is mind you 2013. So we had just lost the Olympic quarterfinal to Italy. It's kind of a big upset. Um, Italy played an incredible match and upset us in the quarterfinal. And I, Mind you, the year before, I'm with the junior national team at Colorado Springs watching the Olympics with the team, like studying them, like, oh, my gosh, these guys are the most amazing players in the world mm-hmm. on a projector watching the Olympics with my peers. And next year, I'm in the same room as I'm preparing to play against Italy, <laughs> yes, a revenge match. <laughs> and so we end up beating them in five. And I'm playing, and that was like, Wow. Like I could see like this was special to a lot of my teammates here who had just got bumped out of the Olympics Mm -hmm. from this particular team with all of these players. This was special. So to be a part of that was awesome. Um, If if you're not familiar, Grand Champions Cup is like the six best teams in the world like that qualified through their zones. Mm -hmm. So we qualified and beat Canada through Norseka and we we qualified in the Norseka region. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing all right. Like we play, it's a round Robin tournament and we need to, gosh, there's a whole lot of different layers. I hope I'm not (laughs) taking too much time. No, no, this is great. But this, this tournament with the old collegiate rules, I could take prize money. It was operation gold. So it was, and the prize money had to have been like, not that much, probably like $3,000 for each player or whatever. 
Got but it. for a college student, <laughs> that is like a million dollars. Yeah. Yes. So I was like, boys, let's get this. Come on. And we end up needing to beat Russia, who are the Olympic champions, to get into the medal round. And so I'm like going to sleep, getting ready, and just like so fired up, dude. Reading about David and Goliath, all of these things. I'm ready. I'll never forget it. And and we go the next day, we get smacked 3-0 uh-huh. out of the out of the out of the metal. <laughs> so there goes my paycheck. There goes my <laughs> there goes all of my dreams of extra guac at Chipotle. <laughs> but um, it was a huge learning experience. And so that kind of propelled my collegiate or I'm sorry, my national team career and eventually my pro career. But throughout, when I was training for that tournament, I was waking up at SC. I was sleeping at my apartment at SC, waking up at probably like 5, 5.30, driving down to Anaheim, practicing at like 8, from like 8 to 12. So I had to schedule all my practices, or I'm sorry, all my classes um, after that, which is pretty normal when you're you know, scheduling classes around your collegiate schedule. Mm-hmm. But I was ending up not practicing with USC for that month training for the grand champions cup got it um but that's kind of a dead time in university in college right you're doing mm-hmm. maybe two hours a week yeah. and so i drive down to anaheim which is about an hour drive r15 possibly hour and a half with traffic practice eat eat lunch as fast as i could drive back up lift at sc i would lift at sc right when got i got it. back and then my classes started i think at two or three and so and then it was, you know, ending at eight or nine and then repeating. So it was, it was a busy time. And I, I remember the USADA like doping agents having to come to my, my college apartment <laughs> at like 5 a.m. knocking on the door. I'm like, dude, what are you guys doing? And it's like, you're a part of the national team. You have to do these random drug tests. <laughs> so my roommates were not that stoked on that particular thing either. But it was a time consuming period but gosh i wouldn't trade it for the world right like it's you're i'm accomplishing one of my goals and I'm, I'm living out one of my dreams i don't care if i don't sleep at all like let's go let's do this mm-hmm. and so it was a lot of on the road with the national team submitting assignments and writing papers and this and that but i mean what an experience what an care. experience once in a lifetime for sure and for all of the student athletes, you know, this is probably time management to its finest right here because yeah, it's yeah. not only a student athlete now, now you have all of these other commitments with the U.S. team, right? Right. 